Hello everybody, welcome back to the United Kingdom Speedrunner Gathering. Normally we are a two-day speedrunning marathon held four times a year in Glasgow, Scotland. But due to the situation with COVID-19, we are bringing you three days of exciting speedruns from the comfort of our own home to yours. We are raising money to support Crisis. They are a charity supporting people out of homelessness for good. They achieve this through education, training and support with housing, employment and health. 100% of your donations will be supporting Crisis. So far, we've raised $475. Please do keep more donations coming in. It's been fantastic right now. And we're about to uh, head off into another run here with the one and only, the BBG13. It is time to go and get a, uh, uh, hold on, a taxi. Ta ta taxi. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that one, Alec. <laughs> um, well, I might as well say it. So, I'm going to give this my best French shot, so we'll see how this goes. So, bonjour, je m'appelle Viper, uh, et bienvenue dans Taxi 2. If you didn't catch that, that was basically, my name is Viper, and welcome to Taxi 2. Uh, it for... was, was pretty good, it was pretty good. Uh, my... So, hello, my name is Olvind, I'm the yeah. resident Frenchman for this game. Uh... <laughs> So, Taxi 2, a game released in 2002 for the PS1. Uh, we're playing in the PS2. Uh, licensed game for the French movie that was released in 2000. Oh, uh, nice. This The movie was made by Europa Corp. You might have heard of them because they made a, Lu uh, a movie called Lucy. Uh, the game in itself is published by Ubisoft and was made by DC Studios, who made such classics and wonderful games such as Winx Club for PS2 and GBA, as well as Hannah Montana for the GBA. Uh, as you can see, we're in for a, a very good time. Oh yes, <laughs> too right. Um, so this is the mission mode. There is a total of, I believe it's nine missions altogether that we've got to do. Um, so some of these missions do tie in with the plot. And we'll kind of try to explain the plot a little bit as we go. Um, so if we're ready on that time, I'll give you a countdown from five, four, three, two, one, go. And we're off. Here we go. So it starts mainly where it, the actual start of the film leaves off. It's a bit of a weird one, this one. I should stress as well that there's uh, some rock music going in the background, but... Uh, Ovin, how do I explain Taxi 2 as an actual film, like the plot of the film? Well, it's a little bit weird because uh, right now what you're seeing here does not follow the plot of the mission at all. It's just sort of a tutorial for this game. Um, because what happens is uh, you play as Daniel, uh, or Daniel, a taxi driver who is employed, sort of employed, by the police of Marseille to help solve crimes and do stuff and um, what happens is um, <clears throat> the Prime Minister of Japan uh, just arrived in France in precisely Marseille so um, to make sure that we will have some sort of uh, some sort of deal with the Japanese the police of Marseille told them like decided to a plan which is roughly uh, let's try to solve crime all around uh, the Prime Minister's car so that we see that Basse is a city where police is actually very good and enforces the law extremely well and what happens is uh, the Yakuza got wind of the fact that the Prime Minister is in um, <clears throat> the Prime Minister is in Marseille so they kidnap him uh, and actually go to Paris. Why are they going to Paris? The reason being, um, <clears throat> well, they want to hypnotize. Um, they want to hypnotize the Japanese minister. Why? I'm not going to spoil it. We're going to get to it when we get to the final mission. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a really weird, a, a weird game to say the least. Like. So, how do, I, how do I explain some of these bits? So, at the start of the film, when the film first begins, we have Danielle uh, racing through some streets. Uh, now, funnily enough, the second mission, which is the pregnant woman, this is actually takes place, both the first, obviously, as Ulvin said, the one that was based at the training mission, 
Um, so the first two missions actually take place before the film even begins. So in this particular mission, we've now got to drive to the pregnant woman's house, and we've now got to go and pick her up. Um, but obviously at the start of the film, it already skips all of this. So really, we're just kind of filling in the blanks. Obviously, as you may know, a movie can tell such amount in, what, two and a half, three hours, depending on the length of the film, maybe under two hours. Um, the game can obviously tell a bit more, but there's some of these missions that do tie in uh, with the game specifically. Uh, for example, the next mission, which we'll come up and we'll get to uh, in a short while, is, is one of them. Um, so there is actually a few camera views for this game as well, uh, and I do need to explain a couple of things. So, as a quick heads up, uh, you'll see that on the top right corner we have a green bar, and we have a red bar. Now, in the green bar that you can see, uh, the green bar is our health for the car. The red bar is for boost. So believe it or not, taxis apparently have boost. It's like need for speed for some odd reason. Um, so in this particular one, what we've got to do is we've got to race through the streets to go and pick up pregnant woman. Again, as I mentioned before. Um, the red bar though, the boost doesn't actually get introduced until I believe the fourth mission. So the fourth mission is called Rendezvous with Petra. And Petra is actually... A character in the film and um, she does appear I forget who plays her but um, she's basically not Danielle I can't remember what the other guy is called. Uh, Emilia. She, she's Emilia. Emilia. So basically Petra is Emilia's wife. Well not exactly she's a girlfriend at the time she becomes a wife at the, during the third movie. Um, and yeah uh, we're going to not see any of these characters because what happens is we're going to spend the entire time in this taxi right here as Danielle. So. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so the, to kind of explain a little bit of the plot um, in a bit more detail, uh, as uh, Oven's already done a great job explaining the plot, but um, it's weird because it's like, so you've got, I think they, they call them, or they're called Yakuza, or in this game they're just known as the Japanese. It's very odd, um, to say the least, but um, it's quite a cool thing. Really, with with how that they are. So, like in in the film, they're portrayed as the, the yakuza, and they drive black Mitsubishi Evos and <clears throat> stuff like that. Um, so, the first, this is actually where like the film connects to the game now. So, this mission is called the Var Rally, and this is literally where the film kicks off. So, at the start of the film, um, the guy in the full enough another Peugeot up ahead, uh, which is a Peugeot 306 Maxi. I believe it's a kit car. Um, is a guy called Jean-Louis Slesser, who I believe is a French racing driver. Um, he is, yeah. And um, he's racing through the streets, as, as you do on a, on a rallying uh, perspective. So he's there, racing through the streets, and then Danielle comes flying up behind him in this uh, taxi, and I want to say shenanigans just ensues. It's just funny to see Danielle just appear out of nowhere, and it's like, yeah, okay, this is, this is somehow normal. A taxi's catching us. Um, the reaction from the co-driver and from Jean-Louis Lesser is just marvellous because he's there going like, he's like, what's that? He's like, there's a taxi behind us. He's like, don't be daft. He's like, no, I'm serious. There's a taxi right behind us. And Danielle's in the taxi saying, no, oh, amateur drivers. They don't know how to drive these days and all the rest of it. Doesn't realise what's actually going on. Um, so you get a bit of humour in that regard. Um, I should also note as well that Danielle's car... For those that are a bit inquisitive about what car it is that he drives, is a Peugeot 406, I believe. Um, heavily modified. Heavily, yeah, heavily <laughs> modified. So the actual car is a 406, um, but it is modified. Um, but um, funnily enough, so in the... You first get introduced to his 406 in the first film, and he keeps this 406. Uh, it's, so it's a uh, plain white 406. And um, obviously he's done it all up and everything. We don't, you don't actually see him do any of it up, I believe, uh, in the actual taxi films. But the car itself is completely, like, really heavily modified. And um, so it goes at ridiculous speeds. And obviously, as you might have, might have guessed, with like some special effects and special tricks and stuff that movie producers tend to do, they obviously make the car go ten times faster than they actually are. Um, but regardless, I, I'd say to be honest. And this is nothing against anyone that may own a Peugeot, is that this is the most reliable and the quickest Peugeot I've ever seen in anything, ever, in this film. It is pretty ridiculous. But it must be known as well that 
not only does he drive this 407 in the first film and in the second film, he drives it again the third film before switching to, I don't know what his next one is, another Peugeot of some sort uh, in the fourth film. And Taxi does actually have five films. Uh, I've yet to see three or four, although I've done a, I've done a run of four. Uh, three, sorry, which is very odd, I know. But um, yeah, there you go. Um, but it, all of the films were developed by, was it Luc Bisson, was it? Is that how you pronounce his uh, name? Yeah, Luc Bisson. Yes. Yeah, he's developed uh, all of them. I said developed, well, directed, with sorry. His, um, with his company, Europacorp. So here we have, uh, we used the boost for the first time. Yes, and the boost in this game is very overpowered. So you'll see now, this red bar is now getting used a lot. Um, I can't, the, the one thing that's worth noting is if you go into a corner too fast, obviously you'll hit the wall and you'll really damage your car and, and so on and so on. But um, the other thing is as well is that if I use too much boost, I can actually blow the engine of the car. So what I'm actually trying to do here is trying to be careful, as careful as I can. Now it's worth noting something as well, is that in these missions, you only get a set amount of health. Um, so you have to be extremely careful with driving, so you make sure, need to make sure that you don't hit too many objects or anything like that. Not only that, you also need to make sure that you don't hit, um, you don't use all of the nitrous. So, for example, if the nitrous is getting very low, um, you really need to back off and stop using it, because if you use too much, then Daniel's taxi's uh, engine will blow up, and fair to say that Whichever way you look at it, whether you wreck the car via losing all its health or blow up the engine, uh, you actually have to restart the mission from the beginning. So, it's a bit like, very similar, in my opinion, very similar to like the driver games, because they were the same where they didn't really have too many checkpoints in the missions and stuff like that. Um, that sort of thing. Also, make sure we get to the end. There we go. Uh, we, we've met Petra, she's at the... Uh, she was at the uh, Arc de Triomphe, apparently. Yeah, by the way, the, yeah, the, the Arc de Triomphe is in Paris. This will be very important, because this next mission, Breakfast at Lily's, which takes place, like, somehow right after... We're back in Marseille. Yeah, he's, he's very... <laughs> Again, this is where... As uh, Olvin was saying to me before, this is where the game really goes, right, okay, you're over here, now you're over here. Go figure. <laughs> it literally is one of them. Um, so this mission can actually be quite tricky because this involves you boosting through traffic and avoiding the bridges and stuff like that. So if I do seem a bit more hesitant at times with this particular mission, that's because I am being hesitant. Um, there's also a mission later on, uh, which we're going to get to, which involves the um, the Mafia, the Yakuza, whatever they're called. In this game, they're called the Japanese, but it's like a Yakuza, I think, in the film. Um, but um, yeah, the, some, some of the missions are actually quite tricky. Now, it's worth noting as well that I'm going these specific routes for a reason, um, and that is because if you take a wrong turn, then the game immediately says, you failed the mission because you went the wrong way. Um, so it is vitally important that you have to learn. It is one of them games where you do have to learn the routes. Um, you can't go off track too much, otherwise the game might like, disqualifies you. Or you know, it it basically says no, you can't do that. Um, so in this particular mission, we have to go through a couple of these shipping containers um, and everything like that. So it's kind of a bit. There's not too much to it other than we're going to drive around corners at 200 miles an hour. Um, but if there's anything you want to mention about the uh, the charity, I right, go right ahead. I think we've got a good place for it. Yeah, very much, mate. Yep, just so you all know, folks, we are raising money for Crisis. They are a charity that are aiming to support people out of homelessness for good. Some of the things that they do, of course, they uh, they are aiming to. Let me find a good one here. What can they do? They like to offer one-to-one -one support, advice, and courses for homeless people in 12 areas across all of the UK, uh, Scotland, England, Wales, uh, I believe Northern Ireland as well. I have to confirm that one. Uh, but what they do is they uh, can help with housing, can help homeless people find a place and keep a rented home. 
to do it with working with landlords to ensure a supply of places to live, giving homeless people the tools and knowledge they need to successfully rent. It's great. Please do keep your donations coming in. Also, that's breakfast at Lily's done. Um, we're on to at your command, General. Um, so to kind of explain this mission very briefly, um, so Lily ha Lily has her father, and Lily is Danielle's girlfriend, I believe, in the film, and um, her father is a military general, and um, basically in the film there's a part where he's like, oh. Christ, I need to get to the airport. So it, there's like a funny moment before, which I can't spoil, unless people don't mind me spoiling, but I'll keep it spoiler free for now. Um, but long story short, he has to get to the airport, and um, Daniel goes, oh, I'll get you there. And he's like, I'm not taking the taxi. He's like, no. Nah. His, his girlfriend, Lily, is like, no, trust me, he'll get you to the airport. So this is essentially the part in, in the film where he's driving through traffic, but obviously half it's cut out. But in the game, again, as we said, you can actually do the uh, the driving and stuff like that. So there's a part there where, as you can just see, I just missed it. Um, but I have to make sure that I don't hit the um, the traffic whatsoever. I need to make sure I'm very careful um, and don't end up wrecking the car. This is also an easy one to use all of your boost on. So there's specific parts that we need to follow on this one. Um, because if we don't follow the route, again, as I said, it's quite easy to miss the arrows and stuff like that. They do come up rather fast, but we do need to get, um, what's it called, Lily's father. I forget what her father's called, but we need to get into the airport. Um, so there is a few like little tricky parts. There is actually a quick way near the end of this particular um, mission um, to get to the airport faster. Um, but in practice, this went quite badly. So for the sake of things, I'm going to use a safe route, which is I'm going to drive slightly off offside a little bit. Um, and um, yeah, we should be fine. So like that. So that is at your command general done. So speaking of the Japanese, the Yakuza, here they are. It even says in the game as well, Yakuza's. So, for... y Yakuza's, by the way, not Yakuza's. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird yeah, they, one. They, they, spelled, they, they spelled it weird. So yeah, uh, the Japanese minister has been captured by Yakuza, and we're going to trail them all the way to the port, uh, where they have their base, because we, well, Daniel, uh, we correctly identify that the smell of fish on the tire marks means that their base is on the port of Marseille. How he somehow knows this, I don't know. I think he'd give, like... Jacques Cousteau are run for his money, this guy. It's like, mm, yeah, it smells of fish. Must be a fish market, or must be near the sea. <laughs> it's, it's very, very strange. So, I, I will just quickly mention about this mission. So, normally, the fastest way to beat this mission is to jump ahead of the Yakuza's car. Um, whilst you're going around all these corners and stuff like that. Um, but, upon doing more and more practice, it went quite badly. So, I'm going to obviously just take it a bit easier. Uh, on this one, and we're gonna just make sure we get past this mission, really, because that's what we want to do. Uh, luckily, thankfully, the AI is, is quite uh, hesitant with us, and uh, you can quite easily overtake them. Um, but I say that, see if we can get past them without killing them. Yeah, should be fine. There we go. And stuff. So this mission is a bit difficult, uh, especially towards the latter end of the mission. Uh, so as we get near the end, there's actually like a bit where it's going to get a bit intense for me. Um, mainly because the controls of this car are slippery, to say the least. So how I, it's kind of hard to kind of describe his, his uh, directing style and things like that for this film, but I honestly think that these films were quite good for the time. Now, it is worth noting something is that, for those that don't know, um, so Taxi, the original Taxi film was released in 1998, uh, or around that, 1998, 1999. Now, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, America had its own version in around 2004, which I'm sure a lot of people may or may not have seen. Um, it starred Queen Latifah, so as usual, you have like your typical star-studded cast. And uh, a certain Jimmy Fallon, I believe it is, from Saturday Night Live was in that film too. So it was a proper star-studded cast back then. 
And it was an interesting film, to say the least. I don't know by how much, but yeah, it... it Let's put it this way, the original one completely wipes the floor with the American version. The American version came out six years later, and it wouldn't be the first time a film has been done where it's like, oh yeah, so the film's original, like, you know, a different, made in a different country, or a different country had it first, and then America decided to uh, cash in on it. Uh, the Italian job is a great example of that. So, in this particular mission, I think it's like Gilbert has, so Gilbert is... So Gilbert, it? Is the, so Gilbert is the uh, chief of police. That's it. So in the movie, he's supposed to be taken by an ambulance, but given that somehow in this game France has become the United States, we're supposed to drive him to the hospital instead. Uh, so yeah, by the way, the game says that he hurt himself. Uh, what the game doesn't tell you is that he actually got paralyzed, which is why you're going on an ambu an ambulance, because the inept officer that is Emilien, which is... Uh, one of the main characters of the, the series as well, uh, got, gave him the wrong secure rope and let him fall from the top of a warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, like I said, it, in this particular film, it's full of, like, you could say cheap gags, in a way, um, but they work very, very well, um, especially for a film of, its, of when it came out and everything like that. And to, to be quite fair with, with Taxi like as a whole as a as like a film series is that there's not many I mean you obviously get like you you know your buddy cop film sort of thing um, for example like Stasky and Hutch and, and stuff like that you have obviously like your remakes but I think this did it better than most because like originally you just you, you just know this Danielle as he's the guy who's a cab driver and he's fast and he can do all of this stuff he can, he, you know, he can really go quick and and all the rest of it, and the next thing you know is it's like, oh yeah, so not only can he go really fast, but yeah, he, he can also do like more than what you think he can. He's uh, he's pretty quick, and that is Gilbert to the hospital. So we're actually pretty much onto the final mission in this game, which is called rescuing the president. And the way I can explain this mission, the easiest way I can explain it, if anyone has played Driver One before. For the PlayStation One, I'm sure a lot of familiar, a lot of people are very familiar with said game. Um, but if you're not, allow me to just kind of explain. At the end of Driver One on the PlayStation One, there is a mission known famously as the President's Run, and that particular mission is known for being extremely hard, unless you do it in the speed runs, at which point it becomes a piece of cake. Anyway, where does that tie into this game? Well, to put it blunt. In Driver 1, you're saving the American president. In this one, you're saving the Japanese president in France. I know it sounds a bit weird, but... No, it's, it's even more convoluted than this. Because you're uh, you're saving the Japanese minister, Japanese uh, but also the French president, because the Yakuza's plan, I've been holding on to this for the entire run, Yeah. the Yakuza's plan is to hypnotize the Japanese minister and order him to kill the French president during the military parade on the 14th of July. It's about as convoluted as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> How this was going to work, I mean, they had the plan, but... How this was going to be successful, no idea. Absolutely no idea. By the way, in the movie, uh, we actually, in the movie, the characters actually use a plane to fly from Marseille to Paris and actually drop the car inside Paris from the plane. But here we're already in Paris, so you don't get to see this pretty awesome scene. Like. I, will, I will just mention as well, um, for those that are interested, like most games that were probably developed in like the early to mid 2000s, um, there is movie clips in this um, from the film, like bits and pieces with I think French commentary over the top. Also, it's worth noting this is very important coming up. Um, so, towards the latter end of a the film, there's a chase that involves two tanks. I say two tanks, tanks blocking off a bridge. So what we have to do here is, if I can get it, yes I can, thank you very much, um, is we have to jump those two tanks. Now, it's worth mentioning something here. If you try and jump the tank on the left, you've no chance. You, you jump the tank on the right, you've got about as every chance as, well, yeah, everybody. Uh, also, time is coming up very, very shortly, so whoever's ready on time, make sure to get ready. Yeah, like... By the way, the streets of Paris have never looked so awesome. 
And that's it. Yeah. And yeah, the, the streets of Paris have never looked so awesome in that stage. I should know. I went there this afternoon. They were exactly like this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the run. It's like it's only nine missions. I'm so happy that that run went as well as it did. It's also just worth noting. Here's a nice surprise for everybody. That was a world record run that I've just done yeah. <laughs> by 13 <laughs> seconds. So GG. Um, didn't expect that, but. Again, I seem to have this knack of just doing UKSG or doing marathons and record run, woo. Um, so that was pretty good. But um, yeah, for those that haven't seen the taxi films before, the films are primarily in French. However, if you want to watch them with English subtitles, the first four are available in French with English subtitles, um, which is the reason why, as I'll show, I own the first four films on DVD. Uh, I've yet to watch three and four, but um, there is a fifth taxi film which I haven't mentioned. The reason being for this is that's again it's primarily in French. It has German subtitles, or I think there's a, you know, French subtitles as per usual. Um, but um, apparently, and maybe I'll think back me up on this. It was apparently awful. Um, uh, yeah, as a yeah. Film. If if you need to if you need to watch the taxi series, skip number five. Yeah. Uh, it was basically sort of a soft reboot slash remake of the series uh, because, uh, well, let's just say that Samina Seri, who is the the main actor of the franchise of the first four films, uh, was in prison uh, when they actually decided to reboot the franchise. So they did it without him. And yeah, the movie is just awful. Just skip it. There's also one last thing I need to mention just before I hand it back to the hosts. Um, is that in films like... In these taxi films, you'll never see this. Well, you probably will in some films, usually when they're taking the mic. But in these films, you see races with cars where you never thought you would. Like, for example, in the first taxi, there's uh, like a race between some like night i think the like w190 mercedes um or e190 i can't what they are the exact model but it's like a, a sporty mercedes saloon versus the peugeot 406 and the 406 really should have lost but with it being taxi it's like daniel's super taxi beats things that are just ridiculous i think it got to a point maybe it was in taxi 5 which i haven't seen but i've seen like little bits and pieces like through thumbnails that there was apparently a race where Daniel or whoever's playing him in, in the fifth one is racing a Lamborghini in the Peugeot. I, I, the logic in that one I don't know, but it's the same with some of the other ones. Like some of the races are just wacky, especially the third one. Um, I won't spoil that one because I'm hoping to try and submit that for the uh, next UKSG. So who knows? But um, the third one's about as wacky as it gets. Let's just say it's got Santa Claus in it, and let's just leave it there. Your mind could probably do the rest of it, but um, yeah, I'll hand it back over to our host, but obviously, just before I do, quick thanks to UKSG once again for having me. Olvin, thank you very much for doing co-commentary for this run. It was a pleasure. Uh, and for being the passenger on this ride that was the run that it was, but um, yeah, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your event. Yes, thank you very much for that run there. The run of taxi. I kind of, I kind of wanna go watch the film now. You know. Yeah, the films oh, are the... really good. <laughs> Indeed. But before I go away and do that, we do have to finish up here. So once again, thank you for the run. Congrats on the world record. You see me be making a habit of this. We will be right back after a quick break here. We are going to be switching over to a wonderful game called Ape Out. So get ready. <laughs> <laughs> 